Welcome to the 115th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could join us. On today's uh, podcast, we're going to be talking about um, Shelburne, Ontario and a yarn store that we visited there. On, this was kind of like on our trip on the way to um, Prince Edward County. Right. And we stopped into Shelburne, which we love, and it's a, it's a great store, we just love it. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna share that with you. And also another store that we went to was on the way, and it's really not in Shelburne, but just- No, it's in Mono. Mono, which is not too far from yep. Shelburne, like That's just right. down the road, really. Exactly. And we're gonna talk about that then, um, as you know, we had a little booth and we did our first show. Oh my gosh, it was so exciting. Mm -hmm. And we want to share that experience and what we did with that in the adventure piece. So I hope you look forward to that. But before we get into all of that, Colin will talk about what we're wearing. Alrighty. So it is starting to get cooler, but I may have made a mistake putting on what I've got on. So if you see me later on in the podcast and this is gone, it's because my face should not be quite as red as it is. I you must be gone. running around because I'm not even warm at all. That's true. I probably, there's no wool in that. Oh, okay. But maybe wool should let me breathe. So we're just going to wear it because it's got <laughs> bling and I'm happy and it's purple. So we're just going to go with that. So let's talk about May first of all. So as you know, she likes her Anguli cowl. And this is by the same pattern designer, Hilary Smith Callis, but this is called the AQ Cow. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And I couldn't find a ball band. Maybe that's what I was running around trying to oh, find I a ball you. band. Um, this is Bernat, nope, I'm lying. It's Barocco Comfort Sock. That's what it is. So there's no wool in it. It's lovely. It would make a great pair of socks, but it also makes a great um, mm -hmm. cowl. And you get that striping without having to Stripe weave in a bunch of ends. I love it. It feels soft. It's great yarn. And beautiful. You look good in purple. I do. You do. <laughs> she does. It's not even my favorite color. I mean, I, I don't understand. Like, I mean, people have a, if you ask me what my favorite color is, I, don't, I think maybe aqua blue would be a favorite, right. but I'm not, everything has to be aqua blue, but you're, no. you're a purple color person and you like everything purple. Like You, would you have... know, you're right. And so I consciously, <laughs> when I'm choosing yarns now, go, okay, I'll look at the purple. I think we really like the purple. But I thought maybe I should try some blue or maybe I should try a teal. Or but maybe you I should always try... go back to the purple. I do like purple. But as we discussed earlier, yeah. there's this thing now, not that I'm not an old lady because I'm totally an old lady, <laughs> but there's, an, uh, there's a purple that's an old lady purple. And right. all I can think of is nylon pants that are old lady purple. So that's why I think I'm trying to ease my way away from purple and yet stay into nice purples. Right. Okay. That's where I am. You're in nice purples. Okay. Nice okay. purples. We'll there go with we go. that. All right. So this is a cowl. What I'm wearing is a cowl. It's called the Caramelized Cowl by Laura Nelkin. And this actually, if you're thinking of doing um, any work with beads, wouldn't be bad to try. There it is. So I had some yarn. Um, the yarn that it she used in the pattern is a singles and so I had a singles and I was saying to me do you know where I got this yarn you know where I got this yarn and so it was in Edinburgh Scotland when we were there which is wow. you know five years or so ago and this is called easyknits.co.uk knit with color and this is called sassy and the colorway is precious I can't believe your memory why do you I mean what is it that makes you remember where you got the yarn is it um, like how because sometimes the yarn is so different. I actually, I knew I bought a blue, uh, not a blue, a purple and a green, mm -hmm. and I haven't used the green yet. Well, it's going to happen. Don't know when. Um, and this was at Kathy Knits, I think, in Edinburgh. So it was down the hill, because I remember mm -hmm. having to walk up the hill. Um, but oh, it was good a, memories on that trip. Really <laughs> great, great memories. Exactly. We had a great time. Um, so that's what I'm wearing. And as I said, I've kind of double wrapped it. I keep doing this, trying to air it out a little <laughs> bit. It's lovely, but it I probably winter would have been better, but um, I really like how it feels and it feels nice. And it's got just a teeny tiny bit of beadwork in it. So as I said, if you're thinking about wanting to dry beads, this isn't a bad one to do. All right. So that's what we're wearing. And next we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object, and I do have to apologize because we are totally in booth knitting mode. <laughs> so you're going to go, yeah, I saw that picture. Yeah, I know you didn't have any color in the printer. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you because it can be in a Tweety kind of yarn. I 
using the Charisma. So this is the Stacy Keitzer Basket Weave Cowl. And I've done it in black. And what I like in the black, yes, you get to see the texture, but that tag that I sew on just pops on the plain color. And I like it. So it's a double wrap cowl similar to this one. And that is by, in the Charisma, by Loops and Threads. And it's great. And right now, at, as we speak, at this time, um, this is at Michael's and their yarn is 30% off. Oh, well, good. It was very well picked over because it must have half started on Friday. But anyway, so I like that. That's for booth knitting. Now, my next finished object, also for booth knitting, and you've seen this again, but we're having a good time with it. So this is the Basic Pom Pom Beanie by Destiny Meyer. And so I have done a child's with a single pom pom. Now, this is neat because I was able to find on Amazon some hat stands that are plexiglass. clear and plexiglass. And so it shows it off. So there's the tag that we put on. There's the nice big pom pom. And so it's nice and light and can do that. Now, the interesting thing, and I have to talk about these tags because I ordered them and didn't realize what happens. But I, I this okay, so the tag itself, that little mountains right side up but the other side of the tag is technically upside down when you see it but when you flip it like that there it is right side up again because I didn't understand why it was one way and the other one was the other way there you go that's why. <laughs> so what I tend to do with a child's hat is knit the uh, ribbing a little longer so that they can wear it longer so okay. you can turn it up, you mean? Turn it up for when they're smaller, and then as they grow, they can turn it the other way You can way really up. turn this up. You're right. You, you certainly can. That. Look at that. That's cute. There you go. That's very cute. So these hats are great. I decided to do single pom-poms just for a little bit. Double pom-poms are kind of fun, too. You did a great job on those pom-poms. Thank you. Now this yarn, oh my goodness. How do you attach that pom-pom button, big button? A big button. Well, can I just show you that You inside? can show, yeah. That's great. So there's a button there that keeps the pom-pom from flopping all over the place. So it's not a floppy? No, not a floppy pom-pom. That's -pom. great, Colleen. It's Good big. job. Oh, thank you. Now the yarn, oh my goodness. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's Bernat Softy Chunky. And I just got this big ball of yarn at uh, Walmart and it's gonna make a number of hats. And I really like this color. Like it's a pretty color, mm -hmm. but it would be good boys, girls. It would yeah, be great. Great, I love it. It's very um, soft too for kids, it's great. Exactly, machine washable, machine dryable. And mm -hmm. I double checked that those tickets, the tags, they are um, dryable on low. Mm. Because I, I had said to somebody, oh yeah, sure, dry it. And I thought, I better check that out. So yes, machine washable, machine dryable, but dry it on low because of that. So that's my second finished object. Now, this next one, I'm so happy. <laughs> I talk about that all the time. I'm so happy, but I'm really happy about this. So I had, and you had seen, done some cross stitch that was then supposed to be made into a project bag. And I had put it off and put it off and put it off. And I finally thought, okay, I'm gonna do a teeny tiny bit every day and it won't take me long. And guess what? It didn't take me long. So here is the project bag. So it's a really nice size. I didn't put any pockets inside, but it is a nice size. So there is the cross stitch and it's um, kind of like a patchwork front. And then I did the back in all one color so if it gets not beach days if it's a cloudy day there you go we're going to do that with the flowers so it was great um i'm a patron of the bakery bears which i've mentioned before and this was their stitchy university in the in the summer so we started with the cross stitch and then you she ended up giving you kate jones gave you instructions on how to make the bag now did she tell you how to put the tag on and everything or did you just do that on your own the handle yeah she said everything it was, wow. she did, and she actually taught it in little chunks. I'd made project bags before, right. um, but there's a few little tricks that she, she had. She helped you out there? Yeah. So yeah. I was really happy with that. Oh, that's, that's professionally done. That's awesome. There we go. Those are great. Nice. So now I just have to get a project. So <laughs> what I'm going to do, so we have uh, one more um, craft. craft fair um, this weekend, and then we're going to have a bit of space. So when we have a bit of space, not that I'm not going to do booth knitting, I'm telling you I'm still working, but I'm going to find a little project that I'm just going to putter at. Nice. Because, mm -hmm. mm. you know, I buy things and I want to use them up. So those are my finished objects, mate. Finished objects for you. 
Well, we've been working hard. Um, mm -hmm. I've been labeling. Um, yes, you, you have. You know, when you have a booth, you, you know, when you have a little craft booth, there's way more involved than what you think. And so I've been doing a lot of the paperwork and the photoshopping and the, all that type of thing. Like, right. we never really a minute. No. And you and I are still making soap for the Christmas uh, booth that we're right. going to have. And mm -hmm. we've been making gnomes and we've been making... Uh, different things. The cool thing was when we went to this last booth, um, or our first booth, one of the ladies there had said, why don't you make some hockey pucks? It would be great. And, and uh, we were like, hockey pucks? Never thought of that because we're uh, in a community that's hockey oriented. Exactly. Um, lots of arenas lots around. Lots of arenas around. And one of our Christmas craft sales actually right next to a hockey arena. Mm -hmm. So we thought, well, why don't we try and figure that out? So uh, we bought some molds mm -hmm. and um, we figured out how to make the kind of rim around the yeah, texture. That around texture. The side. Yeah, that's a good word for yeah. it. Yeah. And so we work it on that. And so I have a hockey puck to show you, a hockey puck soap. I think they'll be great sellers. Um, we've so. got that texture around here. I just mm -hmm. put my fingerprint on that, but we can wipe that off. We I can. We'll, we'll fix it up. Yeah. But does that now look like a hockey puck? It does. Oh my gosh. And so I'm been playing around with how I'm going to label that. Like, and package um, it, that's right. The package, that kind of thing. Another thing that I'm excited about to try is lumps of coal. Oh. And I want to... Naughty. Nice. Naughty, <laughs> nice. You know, <laughs> and little, I'm going to put little red sacks or something like that. Okay. And then um, figure out how to make the coal, and then um, have lumps of coal, whatever that oh, is. Oh, that so, sounds, sounds like I fun, too. I love this hockey puck. Yeah. And, we, and it's made with charcoal. The smell activated is... Activated charcoal is great. It's black tie, and it actually smells yeah, really the fragrance nice. Yeah, is great. Um, I think any kid or anybody that got that for Christmas, they'd be very happy. So anyway, that was exciting. I love how that turned out. Yeah, we, we worked hard, and we yes. got to sort it out. So that's... My finished object. Great. And next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first, second, and third work in progress are basic pom-pom beanies by Destiny Meyer. So they do not have pom-poms on them yet, and a couple of them don't have tags. But you will see that, that um, the stands that I got from Amazon, there were four in the in the package, which is great. Some have round bases, some have square bases. So there's another teal hat. I'll get my assistant, Vanna. <laughs> there she goes. We don't have the tag on this one. Nope, nope. no tag okay. on that one yet. Nice. So there's that, and there's that. So the nice thing is these knit up fairly quickly, um, and so it's gonna be nice to have the hats at the booth, because we did sell four or five of them yes. at that fair. So. It's nice to have hats. And it's nice that this kind of sets them out nicely. Yeah, right. That's mm -hmm. nice. That's very nice. I like these stands. I think they're going to work out just nice. Right. And so all of the yarn is the Bernat Softy Chunky. And the one is, um, can I tell you what the color is? It says teal, surprise. And the other one is a gray marl, which is nice. I like that one too. Um, so that's that. So I am doing some work knitting. I'm doing some more work knitting. So this is one of the whippy wash mitts. Now, one thing I'd like you to help me with is, if you're going to a craft fair, do you want things that are in packages? Because I had packaged things up and they didn't sell and then I took some out of packages and then they sold. So the question is, can you comment down below with that? Do you like to see things wrapped up or do you like to feel them and kind of look at them that way because that would be helpful for me because I've got to figure out what to do with all these whippy wash mitts. KF Jones. Now this is, I picked out one, um, I actually got this at Linda's Crafty. What's the color of this? So, yeah, so I try, I was trying if I could find the ones that stripe and that's, this is one of them. It's the Suds by Estelle and you kind of can see it in the ball. Some of them are just all patterned but some of them actually make stripes. So I'm happy about this one. And I love this, love this color. Yeah. Like, you know, and we've made some soap that we're calling black tie. Right. And that that's the cool. colors yeah, of the soap. Would, yeah, that would be great. I know. So not that you need your wash mitt to match your soap, but anyway. Actually, that's the fragrance that's in the hockey pucks is exactly. black tie, which black is beautiful. Tie. Yes. And that'll be in the, uh, the um, coal soap too is black tie. I think exactly. it's exactly. We like that well. scent. It really does behave well. I know. And Listen to us. <laughs> The fragrance we behaves well. <laughs> it's like we've been doing this our whole life. Well, how many batches of soap have we made? A we, lot. Hundreds now. Yeah. I would think hundreds of batches of soap. Exactly. So we kind of have a clue. 
Yes. You know, we've we've thrown out a lot of mistakes. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> and we still make mistakes. That's true. But we're getting better. We're getting we are, better. for sure. All right. My last work in progress is so close to being done. And I was working on it last night. And that is the cross stitch that I got at Lens Mills. And it's a kit. Um, it's one of the Dimensions kits. And it had everything in it. So it has a needle, which I broke, by the way. It has a needle. It had thread. It had instructions. It had the wood sign with the wire. And here it is. So all of the cross stitch part is done. And as I mentioned the last time, one of the things with this, and I don't know how you would get around it, is when they burn the holes for you to go through, it leaves a little bit of film. Yeah, I guess film's the way to do it. So when you take your white th um, floss through, it's fine for the first bit, and gradually it gets to be a little gray. So I said to me, like, let's take a look at it in the daylight. Is it worth trying to wash it? Which I don't think it would have worked anyway. Um, but she said we're good. So that's that. So what I have to do is I have to put a backing on. So as much as my stuff's okay, I try not to use too many knots, um, I need to put a backing on. So you can order from our dear friends at Amazon, um, and it's called adhesive felt. So all I have to do is cut out that shape, and then this will peel off. Peel oh, off. Self-sticking kind self of Self-sticking, it's great. So oh. I ended up, I think in the package, you get maybe 10 of these. So I've used one before. By the way, that was my gnome cross stitch, I think. Wow. We'll have to pull that out again. Right. Oh, like the gnomes. It's all about the gnomes. Um, so anyway, so it's so close to being done. And so next time I'll show that to you. And that's a Christmas present that we're tucking away. Right. Um, Every time I see this, I think, why? Like, it's so, I, I think, where do you get the patience for this? Like, wow. Well, and as I mentioned, I think what happens is when you're knitting or crocheting and doing that stuff all the time, your hands need to take a break. And do something different. And do something different. Yeah. So you still want to be creative. So that's, and same right. thing with the sewing of that project bag. I was thrilled. I thought, oh my gosh, I like being at my sewing machine. So um, we have a couple of places where I could sell project bags. So I'm going right. to start making mm -hmm. project bags. Mm -hmm. We've got a plan. We've got a work plan yes. that balances it. So. Every day, I don't know where, mm -hmm. you know what, you, maybe you're our vintage, um, but the days go in so quickly. Like I never That's have a minute right. to finish things that I start or, That's right. you know, it's always something to do, but yeah. it's fun. I mean, we yeah. don't have a minute, but it's That's fun. That's right. Well, and we've start today was the day of making less. So we have a list of what we had to get done phone calls, appointments, all that kind of stuff that need to get mm -hmm. done. And we're really getting through that list pretty quick. We are. And when you make a list, I find when you make a list and you check it off, things get done. Exactly. Now, we were trying to do the podcast since Friday. We finally <laughs> had an opportunity today. Exactly. And we miss you when we don't do this kind of exactly. thing. So we, we had to make sure we got that in there. That's right. So those are my works in progress in May. How about you? Well, I've been working. Um, it's been weighing on my head. When you in Canada and you label soaps, um, you have to fill out a uh, cosmetic notification form, correct? Which is very lengthy and takes like you know a couple of days, or so you have to know all the recipes. Which Colleen is excellent and Thank knowing the, how many grams are in there. You have to know the percentages yep. of all your ingredients, and um, with a drop-down menu. And you know, government forms they're not the easiest, <laughs> but it wasn't too bad once we got going. I right. think I worried more about it than actually actually doing it. Right. And it's just actually having your great recipes, what I did, and typed okay. them all up. Right. And then we actually got our um, cosmetic notification forms in, which I'm so happy about. It's That's just it. like a weight lifted yes, from me. Yes, we worked hard but for a couple of days. It is quite done. a thing in Canada to have that done, which I think is a good thing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, because you don't want to be selling soaps that are just... I don't know, toxic, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. We're so, not toxic, but, trust me. No, no, all our ingredients are very natural, in it, and I can see why they would want to monitor that. So. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So that was a big task done, although I don't have a hat to show you, <laughs> a scarf. That's done. So. It's a big thing. It is. But, all right. Yeah. So those are our works in progress, and next we're going to talk about our adventure. As I mentioned in the intro, that uh, we went to Shelburne on our way to Prince Edward County, which was an amazing trip. And uh, we always stop in there in Shelburne whenever we get an opportunity because we love talking to Diane. Yeah. And she did give me some great tips on um, 
your booth and having the square That's right. and all kinds of uh, cute little ideas that we right. had. And we got to visit with some people that we know there. So hello, uh, it was exactly. great to see everybody. So, so Wool and Silk Company is the name of the yarn store. So and It's a great yarn store. It's a it. fantastic yarn uh, store. You know how you walk into certain yarn stores and there's just this wonderful environment? Absolutely. And that welcoming? Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. If you're in that area, you have to go there. The people there are amazing. Mm -hmm. We we enjoy that, yeah. and it was great. First thing they said, we see you're doing soap. <laughs> oh, they're watching our podcast. Yes, it's yes. Great. So it was really nice, um, and we were able to give some people some stitch markers that were there. So we were, it was great. We only took in a couple, but we didn't know that there was I don't know how many people around there knitting. Maybe yeah, it was eight. a sit and knit kind of thing. Sit and knit, and so we we're able to give some of those uh, stitch markers away, which was very nice. And uh, what else about that trip what, that you can talk about? Shelburne's more built up than the last time we went. So it was pre-COVID that we were ah, there. That's right. And there's a lot more houses and a lot more things going on. Yarn stores, as far as the same energy and the same vibe of the yarn store. Yep. Even the street has a good uh, good feeling about it. Exactly. The whole little community there has a wonderful that's feeling. That's right. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not near any big cities or anything like that. Right. It's kind of out there. Mm -hmm. um, but a great place to stop by and visit. It was wonderful. It was. Um, so that was a great adventure. And also we stopped at Linda's Craftique. Yes, we which did. Which was a, probably about 20 minutes down the road. Yeah. And it's not right in Shelburne, but it's, it's close. It's in Mono. Mono, which is very close, and um, it, it was a great little place too. So um, what we'll do is we'll put in a little video of our adventure in the stores, and then you'll know what we're talking about when we come back. The store entrance is lovely. It is, it's and it's the Wool and Silk Company. It looks like I'm checking out right at the very beginning of the <laughs> podcast, but that, that's how quick I'm in. In, out, grab the yarn. So, And Diane's lovely. She was great to talk to. She gave us some great tips for uh, our booth, and, and that was great. Some exactly. good business tips, so I appreciated that. Now, we were going to get a lot more video, or I was going to get a lot more video, but there was a knit-along in the actual store, and I didn't want to... Um, get all the people in there and I don't exactly. think they actually wanted to be in the video but I didn't ask and I didn't so I only got somewhat of the video in the store right but lots of great samples and kits kits galore if you're you know if you're not quite sure what you want to make there's a kit for it and she gets them set up now there was a sign and it said midnight cravings um, and that is a yarn that's made in Manitoba and um, wool and silk company is the only one that has it in Ontario Look at that wool winder. Oh my goodness, I need to get one. Good samples she had too, exactly. Eh, Colleen? Exactly. Nice samples. Lots of great samples. It was so much fun. There I am still checking out. It must have been a long bit of good things I had in there. And here we are at Linda's Craftique, just down the road from Shelburne. We're in Mono, Ontario. And up the stairs we go, and there's two puppies ready to meet us. Now the black dog is the rescue dog and it's not supposed to get out. Oops. And we did not know that. So we had the first part of our visit was to get the black dog in. It came in pretty good though. That's right. And there was some lovely sheep soap. And we actually have that mold made. So I think we need to work on some I of that. I think we need to work on some sheep soap for your... Exactly. Yeah, It'd be great. Yes. And look at all these hats. They're beautiful. And there's felting. May loves felting. As long as she has <laughs> My hands don't like it. <laughs> and there's eucalyn and soap and all kinds of goodies. Lots of different yarns. Really well laid out. Um, it's nice to go in. And there's some of the baby yarn and the lighter weight yarn. Lots of patterns. You know when you're in these stores, I cannot believe the amount of yarn that they have. What is this again? So this is from Thread and Maple, and they have this big folder that you can get, and you can put in some needles, and then it can actually come out and be its own pouch. So that's going to be an investment at some point in time, but right now i got to save my pennies for a little bit first. And it's actually a Canadian company, which is yes. great to, to support Canadian. That's exactly. great. So I needed to get one knitting needle, and I needed to get a couple of other things. There's always a couple of other things. But we'll talk about that in souvenirs. But look at all that yarn. I think of the square footage, what I could have a workshop in there. Exactly. Do you, now, think, do you think they're just yarn hoarders, these people that own stores? or No. <laughs> I think they've got an eye for color, though. Because I don't know. You have to order, and you have to order from a book. And right. it's amazing. Now, the yarn that you're seeing in front of you is this new yarn. 
and it is blown um, on the outside, it, but it's Angora that's blown in. It was really, really soft. It was soft. Look at all the colors. Ooh, I could have spent a long time in here. I know. How do you pick? Exactly. You know, how, how do you You know pick? when you see me come out with a whole lot? The question yes. is, how do you pick? Oh, I find a few things. <laughs> That's how I pick. Look at that sweater hiding back there. It's like you in a shoe store. Yes, I know. <laughs> there I am, just trying to figure it all out. I thought that was a nice little um, sweater. There, right. Or whatever that was, a shawl. Like a little vest. There's, There's that, that yarn, yarn up close. Yeah. It was, it was really, lovely really soft. soft. So really many nice, nice things. I hope that gave you a really good idea of what the yarn stores were like from, on our trip and what our experience was like there and you, you got to share that with you so thank you for that and do you want to talk and? more about the yarn stores or do you want to talk more about our our first craft fair? Well let's just talk a little bit quick about the yarn stores. Okay. I know I've mentioned a lot in the video but I have to tell you kits and samples are the bomb. It, it just is so helpful when you get new ideas and I mean I can make hats out of that basic pom-pom beanie hat right. pattern but it's nice to see other things and see it made up in yarns and it was neat to see the ladies around at um, Wool and Silk Company see the ladies around the table I thought oh I missed that so I might be talking to Little Red Mint and see if we can come up with a way for us old gals to <laughs> sit around us. the table. Us. <laughs> us yes that's like the royal us <laughs> yes that's right um because it was neat to see and i thought oh it's such a community it is, it is and a nice before community. covid i was going out to little red mitten to do that and i really really right. enjoyed that but it amazing and i did mention that uh, minute cravings is in wool and silk company so when you see souvenirs you'll see what happened with that because it's the only one in ontario that carries it and i knit out of that yarn um and i actually knit something and had to uh, rip it out, which I wasn't sad about. I wasn't happy with what I did. And then I knit it again, and it was brilliant. So the yarn's fantastic. Okay. And I'll give another shout out to the ladies there. We just, uh, hello. It was great to see everybody. That's right. And yeah. sorry to Linda of Linda's Craft Teak that we nearly let the dog out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yes. let the dogs out. But it, it got us. back in quite quickly quickly yes this is a did. highway right there I was a little exactly, worried my heart exactly. was kind of like oh, I thought gosh. oh I didn't realize right. that the dog yeah. couldn't get out yeah. but the door was open the dog came out you uh, see exactly. you see it on the video how that's it all right. went but down it was all good <laughs> um yeah so that that was wonderful and now I know some of you are interested in our booth and what we're doing and and our soaping and our, and your knitting and so we thought we would put a video in of what it was like in the day of. Now, uh, this video, what we'll do later on, and maybe you can help me out. Uh, we want to talk about maybe five tips on what it was like to set up a booth. Exactly. Or, um, yeah, what we did in order to make that happen. It's a great idea. Um, but for now, I just wanted to get this. I'm so excited, and I wanted to share that with you. But you can skip this part if you're not interested in, in craft booths and that. You can just skip right through. Um, but if you are, we'll put this video in and then we'll come back and talk about it. Well, here we are packing up. It's fairly early in the morning. Um, we decided to take the two vehicles. It would just be easier. It wasn't too far down the road. And um, I think that was the right decision because we didn't have to stack up. And we also had bought those wagons, which we love. Exactly. And um, that would be easier for us to get those in and out of the vehicles. That's right. Now, who needs the gym? Yeah. We don't need the gym. We just need to be in a craft show. Yes, we do. Now, I'm just going to speed this up because you don't, nobody needs to watch me um, packing up the car. And I think what we'll do later on is have a video where we talk about some tips for if you're going to start a craft show. And we'll give you some five tips but this is just for our podcast to let you know how we did because you've been following us along being supportive which has been great and it's just about time for the main mobile there, there it, it is. is it almost looks like a stroller but it's I not know, it's a big it, wagon and it folds up easy peasy one finger pulls it up there and uh and it's there we easy go. and i was able to find one at canadian tire and they just it happened to have a sale so it worked out well um, mine, the wheels aren't quite as wide as that one, but but they both work uh, equally as well. And, right. You know, this one can go on its side, or it can lay flat. You can put things on top of it. But I like to have the wagon kind of ready at the end because that's the first thing that's going to come out. That makes total is, sense. Yeah. 
and we're just busy, you know, passing each other in the wind there. <laughs> there was a plan. We knew what we had to do. Yeah. And the thing is, I had done a lot of uh, planning ahead of time to see what was going to come out of the vehicle first um, and what we're going to need first. I do have a new appreciation for all those craft shows I've been going to for all those years. That's right. Of what the people go through in order to set up their booths and to make them nice. Look at that car. Yep. There we are. That's my, there's your car. There's your cart. That's right. It folds up a little differently, but it works really well. Off to the show we go. Here we are in the parking lot at the show and there's Colleen's cart. That's the Canadian Tire cart, and here I am with my Costco cart, which I love, and it's just unbelievable. You just do that, there, there it go. is, and Done. there's mine, and put the bottom in, and we're good to go. Yeah, mine does not need a bottom. I don't know why. It's it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. They're both really good. And you have to learn how to Hold lift the up the handle and how to have it come down but it's all good so the trick is what do you put first yeah. what comes second so I think we had to take two or three trips yeah we, and I had to take some things out I put some things in and I thought well that's not gonna work but after we do this a few times I'm sure we'll we'll get it down and then I thought okay I put these bins and what was I thinking <laughs> I don't know what what the heck was I thinking and oh my gosh that's not gonna work okay take that out <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh. So much fun. Yeah. But the good news is we had products. We yes. Had products to sell. That piece of wood right there, that shelving, that shelving I was able to get at a goodwill and I modified it. I put some legs on the bottom, made a bottom shelf, and kind of sanded it, painted it, rust, made it kind of rustic. So we're ready to go. And here we are. We have the two tables. They were lengthwise when we started. And then the fellow asked if we would move them and make an L and make an L shape, and that was not a problem once we got going. And the nice part about this is that Colleen and I seem to have uh, certain little tasks that we do. You know, like for example, putting the tablecloths up. I'm not really good at bending, and I get dizzy. <laughs> so Colleen does all the bending, <laughs> and That's I do right. she a lot does of the, the lifting, lifting, and I do the lifting. So it kind of works out well. And that's kind of how we roll when we actually make soap. We, we have uh, certain skill sets that we, that's we right. use. So it works out well. Oh, there I am bending. Don't tip over me. <laughs> <laughs> so. There we, there we go. There's, There's the I'm... muscle. <laughs> These tablecloths that we got from Amazon are brilliant. So they just yes. pull down over the legs of the table. They're actually for um, an eight foot table, uh, but we are going to have an eight foot table at one of the booths, so we thought we better get eight foot, but they work just as well on the six foot table. Now for this show, we didn't have the banner uh, that we have, but at the end, um, I, we did get the banner for the next show, which I'll put a photo in and you can see the banner, which turned out quite nice. We got that from Vista Print. That's right. And it didn't take long to come. Well, it's calling cleaning the table. <laughs> there were little pieces of wood from the shelf, I think. Oh. From the last time, or no, from the basement. When from we the practice. Up. Yes. And it was good that we had this all set up in the basement. Yeah, and we took pictures just in case we would have forgotten. Which we needed to refer to, uh, because I did forget where some things went when time I got there. There's so many things to remember. Um, so there's signs and there's prices and there's all kinds of things we have to remember. Like I said, we will do a video again and put this up, um, but we'll call it like with the tips. And uh, one of those quick tips would be we had um, a bucket that goes on at the very end with all the little trinkety things kind of in order, which made the process a little easier. Now, we did get our tables all set up and they asked us to move and we were fortunate because the one that was for my knitting was an easier one to move. So we kind of slid things around and then we made room for another person's table.
Colleen and I seem to have our our own little thing going on here that we know what has to be done and what doesn't have to be done. And then we made several trips with the wagons back and forth to the car. I really appreciated that you got me going and made sure I practiced what I needed to do. And these little buckets that we ended up with getting at Costco were really helpful because they hold the soap so nice. They do. And they actually stack on top of each other too. It always amazes me that we have that much product. Yeah. We, our house is definitely a soap store, that's for sure. <laughs> One day when we get our uh, basement organized, we'll show you um, our uh, craft space. Um, when you make soap, you need a lot of items. Absolutely. And a place to store the soap while it's curing. And Oh, look how fast we can move. <laughs> you know, really, it looks, you know, because we were so organized, I think, and had planned this quite well, it went very right. smoothly. And it really didn't take as long. Now, Colleen and I, as you can see, there is nobody else in there. Colleen and I are the early bird people. Yes, we are. Because right at, this started, I, I think, at like at 9 o'clock in the morning. And I think people were coming in at 10 to 9 to set up. That's not us. Like, <laughs> we're early morning. We get there first. Um, you know, we're pretty much set up and people are just starting to come in. That's right. And you know you're in good shape when your wagon's empty and it's time to go get some more things. <laughs> Oh, signs. I got Candles. that sign at the um, the dollar store. Oh, wow. I think it was a dollar store or whatever. It was a great little sign. It comes with all the letters and stuff. Right. And um, it's good. There's our candles going up. It does look nice. You did a great job with all that shelving. Oh, thank you. It was a lot of fun. I enjoy, I actually enjoy the setup part of it too. You know, I don't, I don't mind that at all. How do you like that? It's great. I find that we have lots of things to sell. So look at that, May. That's okay. a soap. I can't believe you made that. Mm -hmm. So many recipes that we tried to get that perfect recipe. And, and I think the recipe is just excellent. Mm -hmm. um, if I say so myself. Yes, I like that. I love I like those it. gnomes. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. And at the show, they were a very good seller. I like the little light around our welcome And sign. I can just peer right over there. That's about all you see about me is we kind of <laughs> my nose up. Um, now all those little signs with the that's just a white pen I bought a paint pen and those little signs I got at a garage sale all of them of course they didn't have anything right written on them right but I got all of those little signs for a dollar at a garage sale yeah so it was you a really lucked out with the two tables because yes. we could divide it up now that rainbow soap probably would have done better over on the soap side yep. but it went with the Christmas balls so rainbow Christmas balls but your stuff's very nice there we go and um, we did give a shout out to, to Penny that visited us to support us and she lives in the area and she's one of our subscribers who we appreciated seeing her first thing in the morning. She was probably one of our first customers ever. Absolutely, that's right. So thank you, Penny. And then people were starting to come in and set up. There's the one person that wasn't set up until later on. Um, the man was selling a fish. Yes. This lady here was selling... Um, uh, gift baskets, great price on those. And at the end of the day, she put them on at 50% off. Oh my goodness. Um, I did, we were all set up by now, we were done. And so I took time out to go uh, and see how other people were doing. Um, my friend there, Connie from Connie Creations, if you want to check her out, she's awesome. And she does uh, wreaths and cool things. She's over in the corner and I'm gonna make my way over there to visit Connie shortly. And just interesting uh, items, and I just appreciate the work that people have gone to, to um, to display their work. Like that is a really cool little gadget. That the ladder, the, the kind, ladder of kind of thing. Yeah. Here's some uh, knitting booth. It does the stuffed animal kind yeah. of? There's, There's my friend Ms. Connie. Hi, Connie. <laughs> oh, she says, "What well, goodness sake!" Um, again, Connie Creations does a great job. Um, she's got such an eye for, um, the I don't know, organizing, organizing stuff. There's my favorite one right there, that pink one. I loved it. Oh, wow. I mean, Colleen and I are not one. We're crafters, but I'm not one for 
for items like that, but some people love them, you know. Exactly. Um, so well, she does such a great job with them. They're I beautiful. Know. Very, very creative. Yep. Like I said, we've been set up forever, and look, people aren't even starting. That's right. Well, and we also found it interesting because we were in a smaller room, um, and the only problem with that small room, because people were coming in, not a problem, is that we couldn't get the access to the internet. Even if I used my own data, the building stopped it. Right. So we did have to take some <clears throat> people outside so that we could, that was my, I kept telling them, that's my other office. <laughs> because we could go outside and get internet out there so and here we are on the on the way there we go that's yeah. me going oh my goodness there's no there's no internet what am i going to do now, but colleen you, has bought some uh different hat stands too so. yes i did but, that yeah. so there is our booth and coming up you'll see our banner that we bought after this booth Well, I hope you enjoyed that little piece of what we were doing there and our day. It was lovely. We got to talk to people. We got to talk exactly. to Penny, like I mentioned in the in the video. It was nice. Yes. Uh, shout out to Penny. That's right. Um, it's really nice to have some of our um, subscribers show up at some of our events. Yeah. We are doing another event next week, which is at Wortley Public School in London, Ontario. Yeah. So we hope to see you there on Saturday, mm -hmm. if you can make it. So that's the 23rd, if I'm correct. Right, next week, yeah. next Saturday, yes. And um, we hope to see you there. And um, check us out on fa uh, Facebook, Handmade by MNC. Um, that's all you have to put into Facebook. And exactly. you can follow, as I learned that, you can now follow wow. or you can like. Look at this techie woman. <laughs> and you can see some of the items that we're selling. I'm going to be can continue to work on my Facebook page, right. our Facebook page, mm -hmm. and see how that works. But check us out on Facebook and see what we're selling. Um, we had a great day at that booth. We did. It started off slow and we thought, okay, if we sell one thing, we'll be happy. Yeah, I thought if we sell, just make our money back. Like, right. first of all, you go, if we could just make our money back, and then it's really slow, and you think, if I could just sell one thing. <laughs> Ended up being a great day. We did, we, did. we did financially, it was okay. We did do another show after that. That's when we got the um, banner, banner that you saw there. Mm -hmm. The other show wasn't quite as lucky on that show as no. far as sales go, but there wasn't the same amount of people. That's right. We did, um, we were able to make up what we had paid to go into the show. Right. So it wasn't very much money. So, nope. we, but we, we, um, we this year is a whole learning curve for us, and we're, right. we're learning, and we want to share the things that we learn with you as we go along this journey. And thanks for coming along this journey with us. All right. So that's our adventure, and next we're going to talk about souvenirs. Well, I went shopping a little bit. You saw me at the very beginning of the video checking out, and then you saw me again checking out. It was the same checking out, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, but um, once again, like the kids, like the yarn. So the first thing that I found, and so this is at the Wool and Silk Company. Diane, thank you very much. Um, you took good care of us. So um, I bought, because you can only get it in Ontario there, I've got one skein of light sock, and it's the Midnight Cravings, and it's called Deep Sea. And I am so happy. You gotta feel that, mate. Even a non knitter would oh, enjoy the squish I of that. I like that, yeah. Yes, yes. Very happy That's with nice. that. That's mm nice. -hmm. So that could make me a nice, you know, that would be nice with my black winter coat. Yes. Yeah. Not, and it's not purple. It's not. That's what I'm saying. See? Going outside the box. <laughs> the purple box. I'm outside. There you go. This is Colleen going outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, not That tells yellow. you how much inside the box she really is. <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. My second, sorry for the crinkle, but I don't want to take it out of the package, is um, the kit. And it's called My Canada Hat by Katie Pomper, so that you get the pattern as well. So I'm going to lift this up crinkly. Sorry, camera lady. So you've got all the yarn that you need for the hat and you get the pom-pom and I'm going to turn it around so you can see. And so I like that it's got some buffalo plaid worked out. It's got some Canadian flags. So I'm going to have a good time with that. And you know what's nice? It's all caked up. I don't have to get out. Not that I mind getting it out, but I don't have to. I can well, start right away. That's very nice. I like it. I think that'll be a great hat. So I'm looking forward to that. 
So that was from Wool and Silk Company. Also, Wool and Silk Company gave us a little notepad with the pen. Exactly. Uh, the pen that she has advertised. That was right. one of the tips that she had give, given us. Right. was like, you know, have a giveaway of a right. notepad and pen, which was lovely. Do you want me to see if I can go grab it quick? Okay. Okay. Well, my hands are empty. <laughs> so you I, couldn't find it. Colleen couldn't find it. I couldn't it. find it quickly. you know it's upstairs, possibly? It's it upstairs. is. I know where I could grab a pen, but the pad of paper. But I want to show you that because it's really... It's a neat idea, yeah. um, as I said, if for yeah. our booth we could do and, that. And Colleen mm -hmm. wanted to go upstairs, and, and I have no patience. <laughs> I'm she like, said, no, die, let's just keep get over here. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Colleen, get over here. Come on, get up. Enough. <laughs> so, my apologies. <laughs> and so, next time we do this, <laughs> you will see it. We'll show it next time. But it was a, it was great of her to give that to yes, us. Yes, so I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Then we headed off to Linda's Craftique, and I needed a sock um, needle and may will say really you needed a sock needle um, but this is a fixed circular and it's 2.25 32 inches so it's a good one for a magic loop so I got one of those and I'm going to say that I got two of these <laughs> and you see that there's one that's because <laughs> my work in progress that was the one well, was it? Yeah, because I wanted to see how it striped up. Oh, okay. So this is also one of the striping ones. So I don't know if you can see in the ball that you get stripes out of this. Is, I can see this that. This is colorway is actually called O Canada. Oh, that's which great. is what it's called. So You've I got really a thing like that going one. on here with Canada. You know what? There's one of these that has the Ukraine colors. colors. Nice. Yeah. So I've done one of those as well. So that was Linda's Craftique, and you say, well, that was your adventure. Well, yes, it was, <laughs> and yet. Hmm. What happened? More. And yet there's more. And yet there's more. <laughs> so when my niece came and we were talking knitting and she had brought a spindle and she said, you really should do some of this. And I thought, well, I've done it once. And the yarn that I spun was not great, but I thought, hmm, that could be very interesting. Now she um, had bought herself a Turkish spindle and she said she really liked it. And I thought, okay, I trust her. She knows what she's doing. So I thought I'm going to order from, and it was Yarn Canada, um, and I got two things. I got an Ashford, um, this is a Nitty Knotty, so this helps you wind your yarn into a skein. Did you know a Nitty Knotty? Oh. <laughs> where, where do you come up with this stuff? Because it says it at the top of the package, it's called a Nitty Knotty. Okay, And no idea how that would work. You can see, I have not even taken this out. So this is a Turkish drop spindle. So they're supposed to be easy to use, and I'm hoping that they are. And actually what I did, which is going to be not a surprise to anybody, is I signed up to take a drop spindle class at Little Redmond. Well, that is, that's going to be great now that you have the drop spindle. That's correct. Now, I thought, oh, I'd like to play with this before I go to class, just because I'd like to do that. And then I thought, well... I'll need to have something to do that. So I picked up, this is called Wool Sliver. It's a 100% pure New Zealand, and this is uh, Coriadale. And there it is. Do you see it's not purple? Well, it's kind of a deep purple, you know? It's called aubergine. <laughs> there we go. Well then. Yes. That's, that's kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it might make a good song. It might. Yeah. yeah, we'll see how it, it works. It wasn't, I, what I really like about it, not very expensive, it's 50 grams, and it's going to allow me to play without worrying about it. I had thought about getting something a little bit pricier, and I thought, no, Colleen, you don't have no idea what you're doing yet. So it's kind of like going out and buying the most expensive fabric when you don't even know how to sew. I can't believe you're finding another craft. Is it the same craft? It's not a knitting craft. Is it a knitting craft? It's another craft. Well, another skill. I what guess. I did the last time, because I did have a drop spindle, not a Turkish drop spindle, um, is I spun some fiber right. enough to make a pair of mittens. Oh well, you did all right. It, then. Well, you should have seen the mittens. Well. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't the greatest. So but the that's lessons okay. are going to be good then. For I'm you. looking forward to that. My understanding is it's two classes, and one you learn how to do the spinning, and then the second one you bring back what you've spun, and they're going to teach you how to apply it together. Cool. I'm hoping it works. So those are my souvenirs in May. How about souvenirs for you? Yes, well, I haven't gotten out much, as you know. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> busy, busy. Is busy, for busy. Sure. Um, but um, as you know, I talked about making uh, little coal soaps. 
for our Christmas booth. Right. And so when we were at Michael's today, um, it was a 40% off coupon. They have these kind of uh, molds that would look like coal. They're actually for gems, mm -hmm. but I think that'll work for coal. I and think it'll be great. to see how that will work. And so then this would be the start of the soap for the little lumps lump of coal. coal. Yeah, exactly. So that's that. Well, I'm hoping I, I mean, I like them, but I hope I don't get one. <laughs> Will you go naughty or nice? <laughs> well, it depends well. on the day. It really depends on the yes, day. Yes, it does. <laughs> So those are our souvenirs. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up, comment down below. Do comment and let me know what you like to see in a craft fair. Do you want to see things all packaged up? Do you want to have them out so you can touch them? Um, I'm interested in that because I want to set our booth up nicely. So when it's only one table, I can't do much knitting, but we're going to end up with a couple of boot times. We get two tables, and so I want to be able to do a good right, job yeah. with that. So we loved your feedback on, on even the tables and what you think and what exactly. we should do differently. Like, Because, like say, we've never done that before, but it's really fun, and we get to socialize and visit. And, there we go. Um, be with now, the other thing, we have 1,450 subscribers. I think we're two for a giveaway. Pretty soon. Yes. When we get to 1,500 subscribers, we're going to do a project bag giveaway. I think we should put a bar of soap in it. Oh, <gasps> we could do both. Yeah. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll do that. So okay. keep watching. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the podcast. And if you don't subscribe, you might get a slump of coal. <laughs> A soap lump of gold. That would be very expensive yeah. to send it to you. That's so it's okay. to our people. It's like, that, that's we're not threatening. No, we're not. But uh, and also check us out on uh, Handmade by MSC on Facebook. That's that right. would be great to see what we sell, and see what you would like us to uh, send on our giveaway. Maybe you want us to send a puppy or a bar of soap. Puppy. Puppy. Like uh, you just sent a puppy. puppy. I know. Pick a puppy. <laughs> that but it would be made soap. of soap. Yes, yeah. soap puppy or a soap gnome or what I mean, gnomes might be harder to ship. To ship. That's but right. a bar of soap or a puppy yep. or we're gonna do that. Yes. All right. So once again, thank you and until next time, you take care.